So let's talk about starting an army of dusty Rupert Marines and Fell Sorcerers, with an overview of getting an army off the ground for Thousand Sons in 40k 10th edition. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Thousand Sons, and in this video I thought we'd talk about starting an army of Zinterline Space Marines, with a review of why you might want to collect Thousand Sons in the first place, a few ideas for planning out an army, talking through their core plastic range and a few ways to expand the army, and finishing up with a look over their rules and one strong army list. Those to talk about, so let's get to scheming and talk through this Sorceress Legion in current 40k. First up, let's talk about why you might want to collect an army of Thousand Sons Space Marines in the current edition of the game. In the lore, the Thousand Sons are a Sorceress Legion that are aligned to Zinch, Chaos Space Marines that rebelled against the Emperor during the Horus Heresy, Magnus and the Thousand Sons somewhat forced into the arms of the traitors, following Magnus's actions in wrecking the Emperor's Webware project, and the Space Wolves winding up being a bit over-enthusiastic in trying to bring the Legion to heel, burning down Prospero, and leading Magnus to throw his lot in with the traitors wholeheartedly. Blessed by the changer of ways, mutations were running rampant throughout the Thousand Sons Legion, until the sorcerer Araman enacted a great rubric sorcery, sealing the armour of every Thousand Sun space marine and reducing his battle brothers to mere dust, these new ensorcelled rubric marines being little more than automata propelled by sorcery, dusty clanking eldritch horrors at the beck and call of the Legion's sorcerers. The Thousand Sons have Egyptian themes and styling, and very much have their sorcerers and psychers at the forefront of their lore, often scheming and plotting and making war to gain forbidden knowledge and enact great rituals to twist the fate of the galaxy in their liking. Models-wise, their army is a small but I think quite nicely executed range. Their main battle line is made up of just two main plastic kits, the Rubit Marines and the Scarab Occult Terminators, resplendent in their Egyptian-styled power armour. They've got several other character sculpts, Magnus the Red in their Primarch, and a whole bunch of helpers and hangers-on, with the Zangors, Zangor Enlightened, and the Mutalith Vortex Beast, these ones ported from Age of Sigma. On top of that, they do get quite a lot of access to generic Chaos Space Marine choices, such as, say, Cultists, and other goodies like Helldrakes or Morlothines, and potentially could add a little bit more theming and styling from their Horus Heresy range as well. They do have some character options and upgrades there if you wanted to dip in. Here are their two primary plastic kits, the dusty clanking rubric marines sealed within their armour and led by an aspiring sorcerer, Scarab Occult Terminators on the left with their Prosperine Capeches, and the battle line rubric marines on the right with their Inferno bolt guns firing warp fire laced rounds. Magnus the Red is the Primarch and the centrepiece of the army, generally considered to be the most powerful psyker in the galaxy, and they also have a unique character miniature for the scheming sorcerer Araman, commanding his forces with the Black Staff. All their twisted birdman helpers and hangers on, we have the Zangors, as mentioned kits that more came from the fantasy slash Age of Sigma type setting, but they do have some upgrade sprues and things for 40k with pistols and chainsaws and things, basically demon mutated goat bird cultists, and the mutilith vortex beast being an arcane focus of energy that the legion psychers can draw upon. They do also have plenty of access to some of the more generic Chaos Space Marine war machines as well, such as the Hell Drake, Chaos Predator, or the Chaos Cultists in the foreground. Typically, these often tend to be in support for the rest of the army, and are very rarely the main event. Pricing-wise, the Thousand Sons do generally rank amongst the cheapest armies in Warhammer 40k to collect. Basically, all of their core kits get you quite a serious amount of points on the board for the amount of money spent, whether it's their Scarab Terminators, or their Ruben Marines, or Sorcerers being really quite an elite faction with a heavy character focus often tends to be a path to being a bit cheaper than most. I would say that their combat patrol is a bit on the subpar side compared with some, but it's still maybe not the worst news overall. Otherwise, for current gameplay in 10th edition, that comes from Index Thousand Sons at the moment. They classically tend to play as infantry-heavy Rubit Marines backed up by powerful sorcerers, a slow clanking phalanx of damage dealers that can punish enemy infantry pretty hard, with sorcerers making big plays behind the lines, giving their ranks all sorts of unfair advantages over the foe, even if their raw hitting power isn't crazily good, whether it's fast double movements, teleporting around the board, or hitting with pinpoint excess damage. Their gameplay revolves a lot around the Kabbalistic rituals, allowing you to bring some powerful sort of spells, where you can spend points on powerful abilities to pop up like that, and their detachment favours magical firepower at the moment, maybe Magnus the Red being the single best beneficiary of that, Currently in Warhammer 40k at the moment, they really are quite strong, if maybe a bit limited in playstyle to just certain lists. 
They are an army that tends to punch up pretty regularly and can win some big tournaments though. Overall, if you want a sorcerer's legion of Zinch Space Marines with some clever tricks and some cool Egyptian-esque styling armour, then the Thousand Sons might be for you. When planning out an army, there's plenty of other resources that you could dig into. It's probably worth having a read of Index Thousand Sons early, just to get a rough idea as to what choices you have in the army, and to get some idea as to what sort of units you might most be interested in. You could think about building army lists with things like Battle Scribe, New Recruit, Warpedia or Games Workshop's app to try and put things together. If you wanted to try before you buy, you could always think about proxying some models against other people, see if you like the overall feel and playstyle of the army, you could use Tabletop Simulator if that's something that you're into. And for videos here on YouTube, there's really quite a lot of stuff. I've made a few Thousand Sons videos, including an index overview, a tier list, and a review of strong army lists at tournaments for them a little bit more recently. I'll link those down in the video description. There's plenty of stuff on other channels though, battle reports, painting guides and all sorts of lore. Lots of stuff to get a bit of a handle on the faction. I certainly check out any Thousand Sons related social media as well, Discord servers, Facebook groups or subreddits. Most of the major 40k factions have at least one of each. They can be a good way just to imbibe a bit of current thinking as to the army and ask a few basic questions yourself if you're just starting out and maybe get a few pointers from current collectors. Then when it comes to planning out an army, as mentioned, I'd likely put together an army list for an idea as to what you might want to wind up as, not necessarily as any sort of hard and fast end game plan, but just something that you think you might like to build towards, and then you can always adapt it as you get in games as your collection grows. With the size of the range of the Thousand Suns, most armies do at least tend to be at least fairly similar to each other, given that we've only really got the rubrics, scarabs, zangors, and sorcerers and things to be the core of the army. And most players might tend to build up some sort of mix of a lot of those. It's not really too hard to get to the point where you can field pretty good numbers of most options. If you wanted though, you certainly could skew to one of the unit types a bit more than most. It could build a terminator heavy force with multiple big blocks of the scarab terminators, maybe have an unusually large zangor or cultist horde element. Maybe a bit more focus on ensorcelled firepower with some predator tanks or some forge fiends to back up the ranks. Or delve into demonic or knightly allies. You could bring in some war dogs or some horrors of zinch if you wanted to add a bit more different flavour into the army. Another big decision might be how soon, if at all, you want to add Magnus to the list. The Primarch himself is the Thousand Sons' big centerpiece. It's certainly quite often played competitively at the moment, though some people do prefer to have forces that aren't just entirely focused on named characters. In the planning stage, I'd certainly think about painting up a test model for the army as well, probably a Rubit Marine as one of the basic troopers. They're at least relatively small and lower investment than most, and quite simple if you don't like the scheme that you've come out with and want to redo it. One of the major talking points about Thousand Sons painting is they do have really quite a lot of trim on their armour plates. As you can see on this guy here, there's almost as much ornate brass or gold as there is blue. In general, if you do want these two elements to be different colours, then in general it's going to take at least some work. I've seen some people who like to just paint the undercoat first and have the blue worked up and then paint in all the trim manually. Some people prefer the method of basing in the trim colour and then blocking in the blue segments. It really is up to you. Executing those yellow and blue stripes on the headdress can be pretty tricky as well if you don't have a particularly steady hand. I'd likely watch a few YouTube videos online to see how people tend to execute it and then try and settle on a colour scheme that you think you're reasonably going to be able to reproduce at least relatively quickly. I have seen people go for painting the army in maybe slightly more abstract styles, maybe using airbrushes and things. Could be a way to save you a lot of time and get some models on the board quicker if it's a result you're if it's a result you're equally happy with. There's nothing really to say that you can't paint up the Thousand Suns in a different colour scheme as well. This certainly is their iconic look in 40k. They could go for other variants, including their Heresy Era colour scheme, which is red and really quite striking and fun, I think. At the end of the day, they are your minis, and I'm sure you could always create a Thousand Suns warband that goes for a different styling. Moving on to miniature purchases. And often with 40k armies, I usually tend to recommend the Combat Patrol as the first thing to go for. I think for Thousand Suns, though, it's genuinely less obvious. It's certainly one option to get a lot of miniatures on the table quickly, and it would be an early purchase for me at least. Though I feel like perhaps my first starting point might actually just be a box of the aforementioned Rubik Marines, just as the Combat Patrol boxes may be considered just a little bit weird. The Combat Patrol boxes are Games Workshop's discount offerings. 
getting you a small amount of money off the miniatures if they were sold separately. And in the Thousand Sons one, you get an Infernal Master, 20 Zangors, 5 Scarab Occult Terminators, and a 40k upgrade kit for Zangors. The one that gets you the Chainsword and Auto Pistol type options. This one does get you a fairly significant discount on the miniatures within, around about a 25% discount on buying separately, plus 4 of those Zangor upgrade frames, which if you do want those, this is the best place to get them. In my opinion, they are kind of ridiculously expensive if you buy them outside of this. It gets you 435 points worth of Thousand Sons and Goat Birds on the board. Though in general, in the Thousand Sons community, it's just considered pretty much problematically Zangor heavy. I think it's rare that people really get into the Thousand Sons and say that Zangors are the core of the army that they want to collect. I'm not saying it's no one, but it's definitely far fewer than like the Rubik Marines and the Scarabs. And it is just strange to have the actual Space Marines outnumbered quite so heavily in the starter box. I think it would have made sense to try and make sure there were some Rubik Marines in here somewhere. That would have had it feel like a lot more of a core of the faction type box set. At the moment as well, I'd say the Rubik Marines are the unit that is important to have in fairly good quantities, maybe a little bit more so than the Zangors and the Terminators right now. The Infernal Master is quite a powerful leader though. In general for me, the Thousand Sons Combat Patrol box feels more like an expansion set for the army as opposed to necessarily the first thing you'd want to buy. If I were building up to a full army of them, I would likely get one, but more of a mind to it, adding more bulk to an army as opposed to being the main event, really. Before we talk about the rest of the Thousand Sons range, I'd certainly bear in mind the different ways in which you can buy Warhammer 40k miniatures. If you're newer, then Direct from Games Workshop is generally the most reliable, but also the most expensive. If you're looking to get some new plastic kits, generally my first port of call would be local or online gaming stores. Official partners with Games Workshop that offer reasonable discounts on the miniatures they sell, usually in the sort of region of 10 to 20% off Warhammer. I do have a few of these linked in the video description. Element Games in the UK, usually for 15% off, Gap Games in Australia, usually for 21%, Fenris Workshop in Canada for 10%, and Wargame Portal in the USA for 15%. Those ones are affiliate links that do help support the channel, but don't cost any extra to use and will save you a significant amount compared with buying directly from Games Workshop if you do wind up buying an entire army over time. There are plenty of other options of course, feel free to check around in your area or have a search for your country. Otherwise, beyond new kits, I'd bear in mind that second hand is also an option. eBay could well be worth a look, you might get variable quality depending on how well people have treated their miniatures, but could save you a fair amount of money and maybe some time and effort as well with painting. Otherwise, I'd bear in mind that 3D printing and third-party manufacturers exist as well. There's generally plenty of good alternative sculpts out there. Most 40k armies these days do at least have some alternative takes on their miniatures from various different creators. That can be an interesting way to add a different sort of flair to an army, maybe mixed in with Games Workshop's miniatures, or be a cool option for getting certain extra aesthetic parts or weapons. Returning to the plastic kits though, let's talk through a few more things from the Thousand Sons range. As mentioned, Rubik Marines would be an early purchase, and this is likely a box that I'd get in multiple. They are pretty much the core of the army, and really quite nice miniatures in my opinion. They do look very striking, even if they take a while to paint up. You can equip them either with Warp Flamers or the Inferno Bolters. Currently Warp Flamers would be the ones that I'd go for at the moment, as say the upgrade in damage is enough to outweigh the loss in range. You get a Soul Reaper Cannon in the unit, which I generally use myself. Some people do like to run Mass Warp Flamers, and at lots of Thousand Suns competitive lists run somewhere between 20 to 40 of these at 2,000 points. In general, they are in pride of place at the core of the force right now. They are quite good for their money at getting points on the board as well, at least compared with other 40k kits, quite a good points per dollar ratio. The Scarab Occult Terminators are the Elites clad in Cataphracti plate. I feel like you want at least some of these to be the elite melee and focal damage dealers for the army. In 10th edition it makes sense to assemble as many soul reapers and hellfire missiles as you can get, as you get them included for free these days. They may be a bit more of a rare sight on the tournament tables, but I feel like they're one of the units that does periodically get good, and realistically I don't think they're much behind the rubrics at the moment. Another important kit for the Thousand Sons are the Exalted Sorcerers. This one's quite a nice one that they have access to at £37.50, 50 euros or $60 for three sorcerer character units. Most other armies tend to be paying at say about £25 per individual HQ. And given that Thousand Sons tend to run pretty sorcerer heavy, this really isn't too bad. 
both the regular ones, exalted ones, and the disc exalted ones all have value. They all have interesting and slightly different special rules for their units, and are often found bearing the Thousand Suns enhancements, all of which are pretty usable at the moment. I feel like if you started Thousand Suns with a box of Rubert Marines, a set of these, and the Combat Patrol, you'd already have quite a nicely rounded army. Maybe the next purchase being a second box of Rubrics, perhaps. Otherwise, when you've got a core force on the go, I would consider getting Magnus the Red if you have interest in landing the Legion's Primarch. It's certainly a very expensive model at £100 or $170, but does take up around about a quarter of your force at 2,000 points. Currently, if you want to play Thousand Sons with their strongest list, he is kind of necessary, I'd say. He's used in pretty much every competitive list that does well. A bit of an overall linchpin for the faction, enormous psychic with the gaze of Magnus, powerful melee, and a good linchpin to boost other units nearby. He does need to be played with carefully though, as you really can't afford to have him shot down too early. But you also can't afford for him to be too far back and completely out of the game. Otherwise you're not going to get the almost 500 points worth of investment you've put in him. Otherwise for support characters, the Infernal Master's handy enough to have. You could have him from the Combat Patrol I guess. A nice bit of extra psychic shooting it could be fun to teleport around with Warp Flamers or other Rubric Marines. Chaos Rhinos are fairly usable for getting rubrics from A to B. I wouldn't say you need them for all of them, but could be nice enough to deliver one key squad to a midfield objective. Araman's also a competitive staple as well. He gives one unit plus one to wound for some big damage maybe on some warp flamers, and a once per game free cabalistic ritual that could be anything from doom bolts to stripping saves from a unit, flying about on his ensorcelled disc of zinch. For the supporters and hangers-on, I'd probably try and get small numbers of them as I expanded the army, but maybe not make them the focus. Zangor's a kind of okay chaff. Enlightened are quite nice to have in small numbers to do objectives and things. And the Mutilith Vortex Beast has got a bit of okay raw power with a surprisingly punchy psychic gun on the back. It can be kind of fun to double the range of Kabbalistic rituals as well, and have things like Doombolt land in the enemy army from surprisingly far away. Finally, for Thousand Suns kits, so bear in mind there's a few options from the Horus Heresy. There's a plastic version of Araman as well, with a different sort of styling. I must admit, I do think his Heresy version's kind of cool. You could even have him stand in for a regular sorcerer. They do have a couple of past discount boxes as well, including the Boarding Patrol, with a whole bunch of rubrics and some spawn. And the Mighty Court of the Crimson King, which Magnus leads. Kind of interesting to have him in a discount box set. Both of these, though, have long been sold out. I'd be kind of surprised if you could find these at a similar sort of price to when they came out, really. Though if you happen to see one in a local gaming store for a similar price to what it was sold at, could be interesting enough. Putting that all together, there's always a lot of scope for just collecting what you like in Warhammer 40k. Bear in mind that the 40k rules do change over time with each balance update, and what's strong now might not be necessarily the strongest thing later. Thousand Suns are good at the moment though, and most data sheets are at least usable, and with the way that people generally want their army to function, Games Workshop are kind of likely to adjust things if Rubert Marines and Scarab Terminators aren't the heart of the army. Though Magnus, for example, has definitely had times where he has swung between either being super useful or kind of terrible. As I mentioned over the past few slides, I'd likely to start out with a box of Rubert Marines, then maybe get either more Rubrics or a copy of the Combat Patrol. Pick up that set of three sorcerers early and you'd have a fairly good force. And lots of different ways that you could add more to that. Building up to something like 30 rubrics wouldn't be unreasonable. You could get rhinos to transport some of them. Magnus the Red is pretty worthy as an include. And maybe some cultists, freaks and mutants with some Zangor units to do grunt work and support. Allies for Thousand Suns maybe don't tend to be desperately commonly used. If you wanted them for fun factor though, some pink horrors could be sturdy enough back objective holders if you'd like. And that could be one way in which you could get some Zinch loan operatives on the table, like the Changeling. Chaos Knights could be used just to add a little bit more strength and muscle to the army if it's what you'd want. Wardog Brigands or Carnivores are currently one of the ways I'd go there. Either big hitting gun turrets or murderous melee machines that don't require support and clever tricks like the rest of the army. In general, I'd have a rough idea of a 2000 point list that you're vaguely working towards, building up towards it, playing games and adapting as you go as you get a feel for the army and how to play it. Finally, let's talk rules for the Legion. As mentioned, Index Thousand Suns is freely downloadable at time of recording at Warhammer Community under the download section, and then Warhammer 40k. You could also use Games Workshop's app or Warhopedia for reference, and the points cost are found in the Mutatorum Field Manual to download in a similar place. 
If you wanted some physical tactile rules, you could find some index cards to pick up, maybe. It is kind of handy to have some reference sheets on the table. Though some people like to make cheat sheets or just have PDFs to hand on their phones. 10th edition will bring a Codex 4000 Sons, though we know that it's not going to be out until at least autumn 2024, and it could potentially be much later than this. It's not announced officially by Games Workshop at time of recording, and it should be the single major rules event 4000 Sons in 10th edition, barring some balance pass changes perhaps. The Codex should change rules really quite a bit. The main edition will be different detachments, so other ways to play the army. My guess is that given that they're a fairly locked deity specific legion, we'll probably get something on the lines of two or three extra ways to play compared with the Cult of Magic. Not sure exactly what sort of themes they'll try and go down with there. They might try and explore different themes of their magic, like maybe the Cult of Duplicity teleporting units about. Or they might go down the route of trying to theme detachments around units, maybe trying to make a mutant army a bit more viable, building around Zangors and things. I certainly not wait for the 10th edition codex to come out to get started though, 40k rules are changing all the time anyway, and the codexes in 10th edition often feel like a bit more of a side grade rather than truly replacing what came before. Some things get reimagined, but lots of things stay the same, I'd say there'll be more similarities than differences. Taking a quick skim over their index rules at the moment though, their core rule is the Cabal of Sorcerers. This is that list of spells I was mentioning earlier, you basically generate Cabal points by having units on the board, Sorcerers and Rubric Marines and Magnus all get you some, and then you can spend those Cabal points on these abilities as the turn goes on, and there's a few different ways that you can manipulate the table a bit with certain enhancements or units. I feel like Games Workshop did a really good job when they wrote these, all of them are interesting and usable in my opinion. There's a cheap one to cancel a failed save, Temporal Serve to double move which could be devastating on Magnus with his psychic firepower. Echoes of the Warp to make a 0 CP stratagem happen, not awful but maybe less potent, now Games Workshop changed that to Battle Tactics. And then finally the two big ones, Doom Bolts to just spam out usually D3 plus 3 Mortal Wounds. In theory it could be as much as 9 if the stars align though and Zinch smiles on you. And then finally for a big 9 Cabal Points, Twist of Fate stops you from taking any regular armor saving throws for the enemy. You could basically have a Space Marine Land Raider that any successful wound will automatically go through and cause damage, which is kind of terrifying. Then all you need to do is just spam a whole load of volume fire shots that wound it, and that could be a powerful route to help destroy virtually anything in the game. These are generally quite big decisions though, and it's quite powerful to be able to have them pop up anywhere, but you do need to be able to know which time it's right to use what, otherwise you're not going to get anywhere near as much value out of this. Otherwise, there's a fair few interesting things for the rest of the detachment. There's a few ways to combine a whole load of psychic shooting firepower if you throw loads of command points at it, and a few other simple ones like changing a damage characteristic of a failed save to zero. That could be quite big for stopping Magnus taking damage. Or again, a strong one for Magnus is rerolling the hit and wound roll for all your psychic shooting with devastating sorcery. I do think that all the enhancements are at least fairly usable. The Umbralific Crystal might be my favourite though, that one's a sort of teleport move that you get to do once per game. It can be quite nice to do with an Infernal Master and a whole load of Warp Flamer rubrics suddenly on the front lines of the enemy and barbecuing their objective scorers. Finally, putting that all together, here's just one example of a competitive 2000 point army list. This one run by a Noah Neundorfer, who used it to take first at the enormous Cherokee Open tournament. I feel like this one's a good example of competitive Thousand Sons at the moment. If anything, the twist on this from the standard competitive offering is that there's a few more Zangors and Spawn than there would be otherwise. But in general, this is pretty orthodox competitive Thousand Sons. Magnus the Red leading the army for a big focal point. Araman to make one unit of rubrics extra scary and get a big free Kabbalistic ritual. A bunch of different sorcerers all offering interesting abilities. Here there's an exalted one with that Umbralific Crystal. Two others on disc, one with Lord of Forbidden Law and an Infernal Master with the Arcane Vortex damage boost. They're leading three squads of Rubik Marines, two of ten and one of five, and all of them are packing Max Warp Flamers, not even taking any Soul Reapers here. Definitely pretty nasty for Overwatch. And then there's two units of ten Zangors for some objective securing that can skirmish quite nicely with enemy infantry. Two units of two Chaos Spawn that are a bit tougher for Thousand Sons with their invulnerable save and a Mutalith Vortex Beast for a bit of raw muscle, and also having the option to double the range of Cabalistic Rituals, potentially sniping things from Doombolt from a long way away, or just getting them on other units that might not be expecting it. 
I feel like Thousand Sons is certainly an army where the list will only get used so far, and it's going to be far more important for the skill of the person playing with it and knowing what to do against different foes. In general though, I feel like the competitive feel of the army is a pretty good one, a big contingent of sorcerers, loads of Rupert Marines, maybe some Zangors or some Scarab Occult Terminators in support if you want them, though not as mandatory. In any case, I think I'll leave that there for the guide to starting Thousand Sons in 10th edition. Look forward to hearing any other thoughts on starting the army down in the comments below. And as mentioned, if you want to watch a few more Thousand Sons things, I'll leave my link to the index overview, tier list and army list videos all down in the video description. If you've been enjoying the videos, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, but I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, with new ones out just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that link in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a few extra benefits, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.